side and then move this into the centre here. We'll deal with the hand later, but you know, just kind of just illustrate this. So that's got the arm now selected. It's one continuous cylinder. So what I'm going to do is now go to go back to the edge selection here and select this edge along here. So we've made an incision around the arm, we've made an incision here, and press F10 again and just hold on shift and just double click on there. And so I've now selected that entire edge loop. Press G again just to kind of cut that. So now this has been cut. I mean now we've actually got a um, uh, a cut here running along the um sorry back to the knees. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Right, um, so now I've got an incision made along the underside of the arm. It, this makes sense for this character. You can see, and the incision doesn't really matter too much where it goes. It shouldn't make a great deal of difference. You shouldn't really ever be able to see it. But you know, it, it's something which you, you don't really want to have. You know, you wouldn't want to have running down the centre of the face or across the face in some sort of strange direction. So we try and make sure these these seams are as hidden as possible. If this was a um, human character viewing from the front, you'd probably make it under the arm. You know, on the side you, you don't see so much really. Just try and keep the seams as far away from the, the visible part as possible. You can see there, there's as few seams as they're visible as possible. There's only really that and that which is visible. And um, we're going to make a seam along the, the underside of the body here in a second as well. So that's that. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll deal with the, the arm in a second. Just going to kind of carry on and um, uh, make some incisions. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go, go return to the body in a second, but we're just going to kind of finish off this arm here, if it mean, makes sense. Um, so, um, so yeah, let's, let's, let's just kind of leave that there. Um, right. Okay, yeah, the next thing we're going to do now is just to um, chop the hand in half. Okay, so I'm going to slice the hand running around here. So. Uh, with edge sleep selection, you could either choose this edge or this, or this one. You know, it might make sense to choose a slightly lower one there if you wanted to kind of uh, try and hide this seam a little bit more. But uh, if I just do this, select that fellow there, this edge there, it's on the inside of the hand. If you imagine it's like a glove, run around, run around to this side and hold down shift and double click on that corresponding edge. Just to so just I just hold shift, just double click there. So I've selected that entire edge loop there. Press G to repeat the last use command, and so I've now kind of cut that. Okay, so the hand is now split into two. Um, okay, yeah, right. I am going to just going to show you the uh, next stage in the graph in the in the UV texture editor, which is to try and make this fella here into from being you can see it's purple, so you can see we've got tangled UVs. So instead of having tangled UVs, we want this to be a cylinder. So the way we're going to do this is by doing this. The thing is, that there's a tool in here we can use to um, yeah. This is, you imagine this is like a cylinder, which is, if this was out straight, you can imagine this being out straight. You have you imagine this being the skin being unfolded and laid out, laid out flat. Now, there is a tool for doing this, for actually unmapping this and pulling this kind of contorted shape into a straightened out shape. Um, we actually didn't need to do these cuts to do this, but I think it's always helpful to put these cuts in here first, just so you can see this, you know, you can, you can see why I'm making these cuts in the first place. You can see that logically where the divisions take place, and you know, it really is a, a planning exercise. So I think just kind of making these incisions does help you to do that. When we we'll see in a minute when we, when we make the incisions around here and on the belly, you know, you'll see these sections as, as kind of logical parts of the topology which we can we can deal with in, you know, individually. So what we're going to do here is just to use a particular tool, a particular visibility mode, just to be able to select some of the components. So I'm going to hold the right mouse button down here on the model and go to vertex face. And this goes to this mode here, which looks great, but um, uh, it's not Tron. It's basically just a, a way of being able to select the vertices within each face. Because you know, a vertex doesn't exist on its own. Uh, there's a list of vertices, but there's also a list of faces. And each of those faces, you know, if you think about it, this is the same vertex as that. Positionally, it's the same position. But, you know, in terms of the normals, in terms of the UVs, it can be different. It might be the same, but it can be different. So if we were to, if I go back to normal object mode again, so we can see these edge, edges. Now I wanted to show you that, that this face here, the, ver the vertex, this corner, as it were. If you imagine this is a piece of paper, a piece of graph paper that we've wrapped around into the shape of a cylinder. You know, if this is once, if this cell one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, going up to eight, you know, this cell, if we're going to unfold this, won't be connected to this anymore. So if you wanted to identify where the corner of that is. 
we have to do it in relation to this, this square, really. That's the only way we can do it. And the same with this one here. We can only really identify this vertex in relation to that square. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the corners. You know, imagine unfolding this, this graph paper into one flat piece of graph paper. We want to be able to set the corners, the two opposed, opposing corners. Now that means that basically setting this vertex in relation to this face, setting this vertex in relation to this face. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this, make the selection now. I'm going to go to um, vertex face mode, and I'm just I'll have to zoom in here to do this. So set that vertex face there, and set some on that side. And so we go in here and set one on this side. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit closer here and pick that fella there. Oops, forgot to hold shift. Hold down do hold down shift. So I've selected those two there. So just those two vertices. That's it. Okay. And now I'm going to go to the. Oops. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the um, back into the UV um, Texture Editor and use this tool here, which is called Layout Rectangle. So we go to Polygons and Layout Rectangle, and it magically lays out the polygons in this order. Now you might notice. You, you know you might find this. This is purple, you might find the order is different, depending on where you're selected, you might find that some pieces go purple, some go red, some of the, some of the winding orders, the order is, uh, is anti-clockwise and some it's clockwise, this is an anti-clockwise winding order, why it's, that's why it's this kind of bluey purple colour. So um, yes, this is this is quite nice really, I mean, it's, it's, what it's done is, it's obviously it's taken what is topologically a grid, and it's ordered it as a grid, now as you can see here, if I select some of these vertices around here, you know, these ones are bunched up. In 3D space, these are bunched up. They occupy, they need less pixels because they're smaller. This will need more pixels because it's larger. You know, we need to see more texture in here than in here. At the moment, we're getting the same amount of texture because the evenly space and the texture space. So, what we're going to do is just going to go to the um, uh, UV shell tool, just kind of select that. Oops, oh, interesting. Okay, I'll do, that. I'll do it this way. I'll press F12 to go to UV selection, select these fellas here. That's them. So I've selected all the UVs now in that square, and going to go to this option here, which is the smooth UV UV tool. When you click on that, it gives you these options here. Unfold. We're going to look at that in a minute. It's going to be very very useful for um, a few few um, situations later on, but uh, we won't need to use it here. Um, you can I think you can, no you can't double click. There's, there's a way of getting to the options to this tool. Um, you, or you can double click on here to get the options to that. We don't really need them though. The default options should work fine. Uh, we're just going to drag this, you just click on the relax with the left mouse button and push it to the right. Now, you can do several, actually no, you can't do it several times, you know, well you can if you unselect anyway, um, but what this is showing us here is that this is as unrelaxed as it will go, um, or as, sorry, as relaxed as it will go, but you notice here that it's kind of settled in the middle, and it's settled on this detail being clustered here as it is in, in 3D space. So relax uh, basically averages the vertices as they appear um, in the um, uh, in the in the 3D space. So what I'm going to do here is just because now it won't it won't adjust the edges. What the default setting is, it won't adjust the edges. If we, if we you, there's no mode you can turn on, you can turn the adjustment edge adjustment on, but you won't get what you expect. It will start shrinking. So what I'm going to do is just try and let me set these. Uh, Move these inwards a bit. So just by scaling these, just so that there's more of a cor so these vertices correspond with the inner ones here. So I'm just doing a bit of you know, a little bit messy for the time being. Uh, it won't be in a minute. Just going to sort this out. Um, it can be done pretty roughly because the, the the relax will sort this out in a minute. again. So now it's starting to flatten out a bit. I mean you could do this a third time until you get this completely right. I think that would that about do really. Um, you know, beyond then it's kind of getting, getting a bit sort of necessary, but um, that's 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 pretty good. So now we have um, a section here which kind of works. This is you know it, it's it's everything we want really. What we want is we want some correspondence to the 3D space, we want it to be topologically correct. We want to be able to scale this so that these faces, when we move these around, they fit in terms of the. You know, we look at the body later on, make sure that the faces here are around about the same sort of size. 
and that will mean that we get the same amount of textual detail. Of course, the size that the polygons are in the texture space when we finally arrange it will determine the um, quality. So, um, okay, so that's that's one kind of hand done. Um, we'll reposition this after after the break then. Okay.